So probably like many of you, I recently started working from home. The office I work at is closed. Everyone in the company is working remotely. What many people forget about the whole office life experience is that coffee is quite a big part of it. Like just having the coffee breaks and brewing the coffee in general. So I thought it might be a really good idea to actually show you how you can get a good tasting coffee at your home. I'm talking about coffee that's a quality of what you can expect from a coffee place. So it's even going to be better than the coffee that you might be having uh, at your office usually. I'm Daniel and today I'm going to show you how to brew amazing coffee at home. Also, a small disclaimer to people who are actually into coffee. I will be using a lot of simplifications here so that people who are not into coffee that much can still relate and they can book a great coffee at home. Okay, so first of all, you're going to need really good coffee beans. And this is the most important step because if you don't have good coffee beans, good equipment is not going to rescue you. There's a few different kinds of coffee roast that depend on what method are you going to use. So first there is light roast and this is something that we're going to focus on in this video. This coffee is usually roasted for filter methods such as V60, Chemex, Aeropress and others. Then there's dark roast and this is something that you're probably most familiar with. This is kind of coffee that you're usually gonna find in Starbucks and other coffee chains. And then there's Omni Roast which usually works for both filter and espresso methods. But it's not that popular and there's only a few roasters I know about that do this kind of roast. When it comes to buying the beans, I usually like to go to the coffee shop and actually talk to the baristas and tell them what are my preferences. But of course now it's quite hard to do. So in this case, the best option is just go to the online stores of the roasteries. Here in Berlin, almost all big coffee roasteries, such as The Barn, Bonanza and Five Elephant, have their online stores. There is also a really cool website if you live in any other European country called European Coffee Trip that covers a bunch of different roasteries across the whole country. Continent. But it's still worth checking if there's maybe a small roastery around your house that's still open but may not have an online store. And when it comes to selecting the coffee beans that's going to be right for you, I would just suggest experimenting as much as possible. Of course, no one requires you as a person who just gets into coffee to know all the different origins and what does it actually mean for the taste of coffee. So because of that, on all of the coffee bags, you always have a taste profile that tells you what more or less you can expect from the coffee. And if you go to a roastery's website, they usually cover that in much greater detail. And also, if the roastery offers a tasting set, I would highly recommend getting one. They usually don't cost that much and they allow you to taste coffees from many different regions at once. One more very important thing, if you don't have a grinder at home then just ask the barista to grind the coffee for you and tell them what kind of method are you going to use. If you're going to order online, most of the roasters allow you to actually check if the coffee has to be ground or no. It's usually a much better option to ask the roaster to grind the coffee for you rather than use a cheap grinder. If you have one of the blade grinders at home, like don't even think about using that. It's going to burn the coffee and it's going to taste really bad, just don't. Okay, but now let's actually jump to the equipment section where I'm going to tell you what kind of tools you're going to need. So it's actually the best if you're going to grind the coffee right before drinking it. This way you're going to preserve most of the coffee's flavor. My recommendation here would be to get a grinder that has steel burrs. They are much more resistant to wearing off comparing to more popular ceramic burrs. Therefore the grind size consistency is much much better. And it's very important because if you don't have a consistent grind size, then the coffee is going to taste a little bit different every time you brew it. So the grinder I'm using is Commandante MK3, which is by many compared to Malkunish EK33. I know my German is terrible. And that's a coffee grinder that you usually see in all of the specialty coffee shops out there. Commandante is quite expensive here just getting into coffee, but there's many cheaper options out there. I highly recommend watching a video by James Hoffman where he goes through different coffee grinders at different price points. And if you cannot imagine hand grinding coffee every single day, then there is some really good electric options out there, including Baratza Encore and Vilfasfart. Okay, so as you might have guessed, consistency and precision in brewing coffee is very important. Therefore, a really good tool you might need is a scale. And I would go as far as saying this is actually the most important tool you need. By using scale, you can always make sure that you're using the right dose of coffee, as well as the right amount of water when brewing coffee. The one I'm using is actually a dedicated coffee scale from company Harrier. And what makes it special is that it has a stopwatch. Of course, you don't really need that if you have a normal kitchen scale, that's totally fine. Then there is even more crazy options that actually have a Bluetooth module so that you can connect the scale to your phone. 
Um, but if you're just starting with coffee, you don't really need that. Then the next thing you're going to need is an actual thing you're going to brew coffee in. So I'm going to cover only V60 and Aeropress, but there's a few different methods out there. A very popular one is Chemex, but it's actually quite expensive. And I've been using Harrier V60 together with this decanter. It comes in a set and costs much, much less. I think it was around 20 euro and Chemex is like 50 or 60. It, it's quite good and it has a plastic dripper that warms up really fast. There's a few different finishes of V60 in different materials and it's very important to know that each of them warms up at a different level. And I think that getting the plastic one is the best option from the economical and practical standpoint of view. And there is also an iPress that I've been using for a while. As you may see the name of it just wear off for me. But yeah it's really good and really fast to use and it's one of my favorite ways to brew coffee. And actually the inventor of iPress says that it's an espresso brewer but I would never say that. I think it's more filtered coffee brewer. There is an accessory that allows you to brew espresso-like coffee using Aeropress, uh, but I'm gonna cover that later in the future. Okay, so the last item on your list when it comes to the equipment is a kettle. So as long as you're going to use Chemex V60 and all of the other pour-over methods, then you're gonna need a gooseneck kettle. The one I've been using for more than a year is Hario Buno. It's quite a good option that comes both as an electric and as a, a stove kettle. There's also a quite pricey version that has a temperature control. But if you're looking for a good kettle that has a temperature control, I would actually go for Bonavita or Bruista. Both of them cost around 100 euro, but they can hold up way more water than this guy. But if you're going to use only Aeropress, then actually I wouldn't get any special kettle, because you're gonna stir the coffee anyway, so it doesn't really matter if your kettle has a gooseneck or no. Okay, so that's really all you need when it comes to equipment. I hope I didn't break your bank. We can jump into brewing coffee. Okay, so first we're going to start with Hario V60. First you need to boil filtered water to around 100 degrees. You don't have to worry if it's going to be 93 or 95, it's it's fine. We're going to brew around 250 milliliters of coffee and for that you need 16 grams of beans. And the golden ratio in coffee industry is usually 1 to 16 or 6 grams of coffee per every 100 milliliters of water. And most importantly, you wanna grind the coffee at the medium coarse grind size. In case of Comandante, it's around 20-21 clicks, in my case at least. Okay, next very important step, put the paper filter into the coffee dripper. So you want to pour water over it to get rid of the paper taste. Just remember to pour the water out to a sink. Next you can just pour your ground coffee into the filter and put everything onto a scale. Okay, so now we can start brewing. First to start the stopwatch and pour around 30-40 grams of water. This phase is called pre-infusion and allows coffee to release all of its CO2. You just have to make sure that all of the coffee is covered by water in this phase. Then wait another 30 seconds and add another 100 milliliters of water and repeat the process until you have the desired amount of coffee. Then you're just waiting a bit for coffee to stop dripping, give it a proper stir and you can start drinking. And I would actually recommend waiting a little bit until the coffee cools down, then it has most of its flavor. And brewing Aeropress is actually not much different. So first step is of course to boil filtered water. One difference with Aeropress is that you actually don't have to use water that has 95 or more degrees. You can use water that has 80 or even less. Actually when I was competing in Aeropress Championship here in Berlin, I was using water at 79 degrees. And if you go through winning recipes of different people, then you see that they actually really often brew at 79 or less. But for you at home, a little bit more is fine. <laughs> so you have to grind around 15-16 grams of coffee, a little bit finer than for V60. I use between 16 or 20 clicks on my Commandante grinder. Next you have to put the round paper filter into the filter basket. Then you screw the basket onto Aeropress, put it on a mug and pour water inside. And again, this way you're getting rid of the paper paper after days. Okay, so now we can start brewing. First, start the stopwatch and pour 100 grams of water. Then you have to stir 5 times and again wait until 30 seconds. After that, pour the remaining 150 grams of water at once. You don't have to stir it again, just put the plunger on top so that you create a vacuum. Then you just wait until 1 minute and 10 seconds and you can press the Aeropress. And that's it. That's super simple, super fast. Okay, so there you have it. That's how I brew coffee at home every day, especially now when and working remotely. I just wanted to remind you that without good coffee beans you are not going to get good coffee at all. So just make sure to buy good coffee from your local roastery, also support them in these very hard times. Okay, so that's it for the video. Uh, thank you so much. It's also first video on this channel, so if you want to support me and see more content like this, uh, feel free to subscribe. So I hope you're going to have amazing coffee at home now and see you in the next one.